My guest is Candice Leela Rawlingson. And uh, Candice is the founder executive director of the Walker Leela Foundation. She is an award winning producer for Best Documentary, Best Docudrama which is positive and pregnant. And she's also uh, very learned in an area that we will be talking about later, which is the whole question of social awareness and, and social media. That is going to come when we get into a part she talked about with this diversification. But let us talk about, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you so much for having me, Rennie Bishop. The pleasure is mine. And our guests, uh, our listeners will be the beneficiaries of your expertise and what you've been doing. Tell our listeners just a bit about the foundation the Wakalela Foundation was established in 2008. Uh, we wanted to do a little community work. Um, our family, we were trying to figure out ways to just how could we give back. So mm-hmm. we decided to establish the Wakalela Foundation to help us do our community outreach. So um, our first project that we were we worked on in 2010 mm-hmm. that went public was Positive and Pregnant. Mm-hmm. This was a film on the prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV mm-hmm. where we, we explored all the treatment measures to ensure that children are born free of HIV. Mm-hmm. We focused on Lorna Henry. She is now deceased, but Lorna's story was told and she helped us in the end to give the me- messages that would really influence people to have that form of behavior change. So mm-hmm. that's what we really wanted to push I with that film. So we went all over the world with the Positive and Pregnant through the the film festival circuit. We had a local tour of schools and communities through the Ministry of People and Social Development, as well as the Ministry of um, Culture helped us and the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company. So we were able to d- just make so much inroads with this little film. We were then inspired through so many feedback that we got Mm -hmm. from the outreach programs saying that they want to see more. They wanted to find out more about the male perspective and male involvement in the process towards prevention. So we decided to create the Positive Film Series. Mm -hmm. So Positive and Pregnant is just part one of this series. We'll talk about that series a little later on uh, as we continue talking. But as you open the door, I want to stay with Positive and Pregnant because you know, I had the opportunity to, to, to look there. And the film puts uh, two things. The film puts two things into perspective. One is that the age of persons having sex is way younger than a lot of folks knew or want to accept. And two, that parents are also much younger now. Speak yes. to this for me. Yeah, and this is why we have to create mediums where we could communicate with this young millennial audience. Mm-hmm. Parents are in that 35 age group and the children are nine becoming now preteen type of um, age group. So we want to create films where you could sit down with your children and have those sexual education messages and sexual awareness messages because parents throughout Trinidad and Tobago and all around the world, Rennie, as you know, are exploring ways to introduce sexual education to their children because it's not provided in schools. So that is what we do at the Walker Leela Foundation. We use our films, go into schools and communities to help parents really have that outlet where you could have a sit down with your children and say here's what look at that film and when you finish mm-hmm. I want you to be able to ask me anything one of the things we find is that when we talk about safe sex most um, persons equate this as pregnancy prevention and not preventative measures for the potentially debilitating STI, STD and HIV uh, situation with this film it is a step forward to, towards communicating the dangers of these actions how do exactly. we communicate to young people in particular that it is these diseases that are now the real boogeyman that they have to look at. But this is why we're creating the, these films, Positive and Still Here and Positive and, uh, and Born Free. Mm-hmm. So with the Positive, I have to now segue into these two films, um, the Positive film series that yes. we are creating. So with Positive and Pregnant, part one, a lot of people had the opportunity to see it. So we're now screening that film again at the Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business on the 1st of December. Mm-hmm. We're having a screening to commemorate World AIDS Day. Uh, on the, the, the screening starts at 4 p.m. Doors open from 1. So we're asking people to go to our website, walkerlelafoundation.org, to RSVP to attend that event, anyone who's interested. Mm-hmm. And at that um, re-premiere of the Positive Film Series, we are going to 
launch a crowdfunding platform where we want everybody in Trinidad to be able to donate as little as ten dollars to the making of these films because we're all looking for ways to introduce sexual education to our children and to promote family life and using our films is the perfect medium to start those conversations so Mm -hmm. Positive and Still Here focuses on male involvement in the process towards the prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. So for the first time, we'll hear fathers speak yes. on these topics because we find the men, you know, men have a lot to say, but they don't have the medium to say it. So we are now providing that outlet. And many many times, too, they want to explain away their behavior. I mean, if you look at positive and pregnant, the guys um, taking the position, come on, it's not really a deal. And even if this happened, we can do so and so. But now is a chance yes. for you for us to hear the man's position and hopefully give the message to them that they are partners in the true sense exactly. of not only the act, but its prevention and or treatment. Yeah. And and in promoting family life mm-hmm. as well. Yes. That that re, That is the real essence of it, to promote that family. Family, that family, family life and awareness, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, the third part of the film now it's born free. Born Free Now focuses on the children yes. who are born to HIV-positive parents and their challenges mm. in the world. Lorna Henry, who we featured in the first film, Positive and Pregnant, she made so many inroads to get her children, uh, you know, accepted in schools. And just to have them not be made, be bullied really into you know, just inheriting her stigma that she was experiencing. She didn't want her children to go through that. And she fought fiercely and advocated for sexual awareness in mm-hmm. schools and just to make young people more aware without tarnishing their innocence. Your inter- your interaction uh, with younger folks, I mean, uh, you know, the UN Re- uh, United Nations uh, AIDS report um, spoke about the prevalence of, of, of uh, AIDS and, and STDs in Trinidad Tobago ages 15 to 49. You mentioned mm-hmm. that area of the education. Many have argued that school may not necessarily be the best place to have this conversation. The minister mm-hmm. had a position in initially and he has changed that someone modified it because he's listening to the voices who were saying we should discuss this in school there are many who argue however in trying to do that without the right professionals Mm -hmm. we are running the risk of misinformation speak to that please exactly so in um i was privy to judge the right start forum they hosted a couple of years back on um, prevention of HIV and sexual uh, introduction of sexual awareness in schools and um, one of the things that resonated with me is when the young people were, were saying that they believe that sexual uh, uh, education should be taught in school so there was a huge debate on that but school can be the medium to meet youngsters and we want to be able to go to that audience between 14 to 16 years old because that is where we could really grab them Mm. and save their lives from making wrong choices in future. So school can be the medium to get to the children, but yet the NGO community may be the best outlet because they would have the the knowledge and have the adherence to Mm. policies that through the Ministry of Health, you know, the Ministry of Education to really guide that process and so that we will all have a format and a syllabus in which we could go to schools with. So until the NGO community could really come together and really create that, mm-hmm. I see there, there's several things going on where the, the, regional, um, the regional health authorities, they're doing their own programs in this nature as well. So things are happening. I, you have to say that there are outlets, but what we all have to do now is have that collective policy and guidelines on how we could really address these issues and use schools now when they have downtime now to to go in and speak with the form fours form fives Mm. and get them now to see the film have that question and answer forum when we the wakalela foundation went to the schools through our outreach program we used a, a format we screened the film we had a question and answer session and 
a uh, role playing for session mm. at the end. With the mm. role playing, we got mm. to see now their own take on the film. So they got to remix parts of the film and you would see now their own perspectives. In addition to their discomfort with talking about these things and oh, you can yes. judge exactly how you approach it next time. Listeners, in case you just joined us, it's four minutes before the top of the hour. The voice you're hearing is that of founder and executive director of the Walker Leela Foundation. She's Candice Leela Rollinson and we are very happy to have her here this morning. There is a, 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 a film series that's starting on Thursday, December 1st at 4 o'clock. Folks are invited to go up there at the Arthur Look Jack yes. uh, School in order to see what they are doing there. The genesis of this um, comes into, comes out of the Lorna uh, Henry story and Positive and Pregnant was the um, the groundbreaker as it yes. were and we are building on that. Let's talk about this whole area just a bit more on school because a lot of young folks succumb to risky behavior uh, because of peer pressure in one form or the other and where best to have this conversation than the place where they have their peers. Yeah. Yeah, because we have the one of the things um, through our outreach program too. I had to really figure out how our film was able to cause and influence behavior change. So I had to go back to the drawing board. I went back to the University of West, the West Indies to study social work on how to really do this measurement and evaluative study. So I worked with Dr. Andrea Thompson of Leeds University. The University of Trinidad and, and Tobago was hosting her here. And we were looking at how film and popular culture was able to influence behavior change. Mm -hmm. So through that study, we were able to establish that our film and films like Positive and Pregnant and our film series, Positive, the Positive Film Series, we were able to establish that our films can indeed cause short-term behavior change. However, positive reinforcement is necessary to promote a a lasting effect towards behavior change. And that's what really inspired us to create Positive and Still Here and Born Free. I like that whole role-playing concept you mentioned a moment ago because a lot of folks believe that the way you teach people is that you speak at them. Usually the best way to teach people I have read and I believe is to encourage them to explore things themselves and then opening the conversation where they feel comfortable talking to each other about it even after the teacher and or the NGO or the non-governmental organization has gone in there and spoken with them, you have left them with a freedom, with an easy access, oh, a way yes. of articulating the things that hitherto would remain taboo. Yes. And with, with some of the teachers out of the room, you, you really get them to open up. Mm-hmm. We get mm-hmm. them to really express themselves in a way that, you know, they, 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 they talk their mind. They have the opportunity to say, hey, I didn't like how the mother in, in Positive and Pregnant reacted. I would have done something different. Mm-hmm. And they, they have their own little replay of how they would have done it through the role-playing session. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was how we really got to see how they saw themselves and, and really saw how we were able to influence that awareness and, and that's why we're so passionate about this because we know this method works. We've tried it before. It's mm-hmm. tested. It's proven. Mm-hmm. It's, we've had the outcome studies. We are now this is towards creating mm-hmm. a lasting impact. And this is why we're pursuing the positive film series and creating positive and still here and born free. So what we want to do is launch a crowdfunding campaign to help everyone in Trinidad and Tobago help us create this film. So mm-hmm. anybody mm-hmm. could go to any local lotto boot pay via sure pay, you know, the NLCB via bill payment agents mm-hmm. and donate from as little as $10 to the creation of this film. Mm-hmm. The proceeds go directly to the Walker Leela Foundation to the creation of these films Positive and Still Here mm-hmm. and Born Free. So Parents who are looking for ways of introducing sexual awareness to their children, they can donate to this fund because this now is the outlet to start those conversations with our children. So we have PayWise on board. We have a GoFundMe campaign as well. We have one on Indiegogo Generosity and um, on Scotiabank Direct Deposits and our account there as well. Our account number at Scotiabank is 101, actually that's 120 three three zero four 
That's our account number at the Scotia Bank. One, uh, two, zero, three, three, zero, four. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's the Walker Leela Foundation, Tuna Puna branch. We have a branch number as well. It's four, two, two, one, three, five. That number again, four, two, two, one, three, five. It is 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, my guest is Candice Leela Rawlingson. Uh, we are talking about the film series that's coming up. Coming out of a film um, a presentation, either to schools or even those who attend this film, uh, this positive festival that's coming up here. Uh, the question is the availability of assistance, the availability of help, the availability yeah. of counseling. Uh, when people go in, for instance, they look at your phone, they move to, they go, they get tested and find out, unfortunately, yes. that they um, have been adversely impacted with this uh, STD. Here is the question for you. Is medication and counseling easily available or what is being done from your organization, one in collaboration with other organizations and or the advice you're giving to government to make it more available medication and counseling for those uh, victims? Uh, medication and uh, um, access to counseling mm-hmm. is available through mm-hmm. the Ministry of People and Social Development and the programs that they have. Um, the NWRHAs, the regional health authorities mm-hmm. here, they have a lovely counseling program. A lot of the NGOs as well have counseling programs. We are able to broker counseling to people who may approach us and say, here's what we, we, we found out that we um, are status and we would like to, to seek counseling. Where there are people who approach us um, saying that they want their children to be aware of their status but don't know how to give them those messages. Well, we broker services where we call upon other NGOs to help us mm-hmm. do this because we can't do it alone. Eh? So we are in the NGO network where we can call upon our, our sister organizations to help us in creating these avenues where people could really, you know, find themselves again after knowing their status. There is nothing better than uh, education because that is really the door opener. Most, uh, there are children who are born to people with uh, HIV and they are born without it. However, yes. mother-to-child transmission is a leading cause. Um, the clarity for those who may have kids and may want to have kids even though they have HIV, that is the sort of assurance and education they need. Is that what they find through your organization? Yes. Yes, so we are able to now give messages using the films that, you know, you can still promote family life with, even with, with uh, HIV positive status. You know, so people who ha- have their reservations about starting their own families after finding out their status, mm-hmm. they, they have now shifted their opinions, you know, and, and now finding themselves again saying, yes, I would like to create life. And um, we, we also have another screening at NALIS on the second and where we're speaking with a HIV positive mother of three and she is a poet as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I just spoke with with their organization through the Roots Foundation and they are hosting us at NALIS on the 2nd. So there we will meet uh, face to face a real mother and her challenges in raising her children and informing them of her status. So, um, you know, it's so much there's so many forums so much is happening now in terms of awareness mm-hmm. and in policies for persons living with hiv it's no longer taboo you know people freely discuss what are the options to, to prevent mother to child transmission and our film we're proud to see is the catalyst for that change. Well, I'm very happy. I'm very happy for that. Uh, my guest, by the way, is also the National Youth Award recipient for social awareness. And uh, it's really good to have you here. There are two aspects of this I want to explore. One of them uh, has to be uh, your your own journey and what got you involved in this, uh, in, in, in this endeavor. And I also want to follow through on the issue that everybody's talking about, diversification for Trinidad and Tobago. And the film industry is one of the areas that you believe yes. can assist in that area. We've been talking about the film festival that's coming up beginning on uh, Thursday, uh, this Thursday, December 1st. But I do want to find out from you, Candice, how you got into this role. What was the motivation? What dragged you? What was the, the gravitational pull that brought you into one film and two into this foundation? Actually, it, it happened simultaneously. Got, getting into film 
and working on HIV films. Mm -hmm. Um, In 1996, I was just a teenager when I worked on a film called A Measure of Hope, which was directed by Kirk Pereira. Mm -hmm. So A Measure of Hope now, we went to the the Medical Research Foundation and we looked at how people were really giving of themselves to finding the cure for HIV. It was just becoming aware, you know, people were just becoming aware of how prevalent HIV was in Trinidad and Tobago. And we were doing the, we were, the, the program we were doing was called A Measure of Hope. And it focused on how people were t- giving themselves just willingly towards finding the cure for HIV submitting to the HIV vaccine trials. So that was in 1996, and that really inspired me to create more films in HIV and started me off in film production. So I was just uh, locations um, on locations doing production work, um, regular production assistant, time coding, you name it, doing everything on set and behind the scenes, and just really loving the whole creative industries and film especially and seeing how we were changing lives through these little documentaries we were creating and um that really inspired me to continue working in film so after that we did a couple of documentaries um we did a pilot called time to lime all under little fire pictures so that was really fun so i worked there from 1996 to the year 2000 while i was still in school just doing summer jobs and having so much fun doing that and not realizing i was building the foundation to my career went off to work at Eastern Credit Union for about six years and still behind the scenes working on film. My sister Stacy Layla, who was the director of Positive and Pregnant, mm. had done a documentary um, on rap, so music. And I was t- telling Stacy, hey, you know, we should do another documentary following up on A Measure of Hope that we did in 1996. And she's like, yeah, you know, we could probably do that, but we have to find funding somehow. And then we saw the, the U.S. Embassy through PEPFA, President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. Mm-hmm. They had a call for grants. We applied. It took us three years to secure the grant funding. And we turned that little grant around and made Positive and Pregnant and got so many doors open that we had to create more films because we, 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 we opened a hornet's nest, you know, we jet nest, as we say in Trinidad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we had to really follow up now and follow through with creating those films. And I made a promise to Lorna Henry. We, made, we had a real spiritual relationship we developed throughout the years after featuring her in Positive and Pregnant. We go through very close. And Lorna made me promise that I would do two more films, Positive and Still Here and Born Free. You know, just talking about it in dialogue. Hey, you know, we have to do this. And we could focus the other one on the male perspective because yes. everybody's saying the man's point of view was neglected and positive and pregnant. We have to do another one. And she's like, don't forget the children. You know, you have to do something for the children too. And that's how we really, you know, created these films. And Lorna really made me say, hey, I have to do this. And when she passed away in 2014, that really struck a tone and say, here what? You know, Lorna is no longer here to fight for this. I have to live up to this promise that I made to her. And we're here now doing these films. And we know that film is the best medium to captivate young millennial audiences. And it's a good thing that you've chosen to do that. So um, to c- carry through your analogy, it is true to say that Lorna opened a creative Jack Spanier nest. Yep. And that is did. good. All right. I've got two minutes on me and I dare two areas I must get into. One is this whole question of since you've been so heavily involved in film and filmmaking, yes. you understand the need for us to use the Caribbean's diversity this amalgam of peoples we have here yes. as, a, 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 as a foundation together with great climate and so on as a place that we can bring investors to, which is the Caribbean, this is what you're proposing, to make this a film industry. Briefly delineate that for me. Well, I well, um, through the Atta Logtra Graduate School of Business, I was doing my master's in innovation and international business development mm-hmm. to to supplement my um, pub, my in my degrees in 
public health and social work, I had to find something else to do to complement this. So in this program, we did social innovation. So I had to find ways now of incorporating what I do in film and in, in creating social change. So I, when I looked at the film industry closely and being so heavily involved for the past 20 years, just knowing that this is the, the way, this is the way to diversify the economy and be able to create so many jobs, not just the, the, the high professional jobs, because but there's so many opportunities from the makeup, the hair, the wardrobe, the, the accountants, directors, writers. Mm-hmm. So I had to do a study on, on how we could really use this creative industry to diversify the economy. So I did a survey. Um, I launched it on my website, creativeindustry.buzz. That's my blog website. So I'm using that website now as the, the, um, the host to for the surveys so anyone could go on there and still do these surveys yes even though i'm finished with a degree i'm still getting the the knowledge the information that data is going to help us create business goals and get the key set the key performance indicators to really help us create creative industry business focused on the creative industries in the film production sector, which encompasses music, fashion, film. Well, there's so much we can do. So the survey now really helped me to see that the Caribbean can solve global Hollywood's diversity rally cry. Are you finding like-minded people on this briefly? Or oh, are you yes. are you finding, for instance, the government underseeing that vision of um, making, the, making the region of Trinidad and Tobago in particular uh, one of those areas that will attract this kind of money and that sort of production? They are aware that the creative industries has the potential, but, but until, the until they read my thesis and my mm. business model on how we could really do it, then, you know, then I think they would really be able to then see my vision for the creative industry. Well, then in conclusion, would you say that the private industry is seeing that vision that they you can begin it. to get them here involved uh, financially in putting together more of what you're doing here on a larger budget and that being the magnet that will bring other folks in. What I think the government could help us do is create that ease of doing business here Mm. to really make Trinidad investor, you know, friendly, Mm -hmm. that they would want to come here, you know. We have to find ways of really, you know, just lowering crime and I think Mm. the creative industries, we are all creative people in Trinidad and Tobago and I think like sometimes they like seeing themselves on Crime Watch. So Mm. we have to now put them in in real films. Mm -hmm. We have to now find ways of harnessing our creative talent that is in everyone in Trinidad and Tobago from the costume designers to the acting and everyone who's involved. You know, we are a a culture rich, creative country and in the Caribbean I believe that we have that diversity that the whole Hollywood, global Hollywood is clamoring for. Driss Elba went to the UK Parliament saying that um, we need Mm. more diversity on screen. It's, it's, we see it everywhere except on TV. Mm -hmm. We want to see that in, not just in the, the complexions but we want to see it in in the different type of people that casted for various roles don't just wait for Hollywood to come for it take it to them I gotta wrap this up uh, but I I need to get a website where folks can go up and get more information one about the screening that's coming this Saturday at uh, Upper Lock Jack uh, School it is at at, at 4 o'clock is when it it begins Um, this is part of the trilogy and I need to give them the website and once again um, to get them to support you as much as possible give us those to one the website and how they can make their contributions please. right so you can go to www.walkerlelafoundation.org that's w-a-l-k-e-r-l-e-l-a foundation.org mm-hmm. you can go to our donate page there you'll find our scotia bank information the paywise information where you could go to any L- nlcb via mm-hmm. bill payment agents that's the simplest way, simplest way you okay. can donate mm-hmm. from ten dollars all the way up to five thousand dollars people who want to donate more than that can go to the bank our scotia bank account number is 100 actually that's a one two zero three three zero four our branch is a tuna puna branch and the paywise account number it's one hundred seven seven eight two seven five thousand. That number again, one hundred seven seven eight two seven five thousand. Candice, I will be up there on Thursday. I urge folks to be Please up there. Out. And it has really been a, a, a learning experience, a very pleasant 
experience having you this morning. Candice Leela Rollingson, so thank you so much, uh, founder and executive director of the Walker Leela Foundation. I look forward to seeing you on the 1st of December. I look forward to being there too. Thank you so very much. You have yourself a wonderful day.